During the 1990s, Sega and Nintendo were in the middle of a frying pan, battling against each other to win the console wars. During this time, countless accessories were released exclusive to their consoles to try and tip the scale. Some were great, whilst others failed. Perhaps one of the more infamous accessories was the Power Glove, released in 1989 for the NES by a company called Mattel. The glove that acts as the controller to have all the power of all the action at your fingertips, quite literally. Nintendo just endorsed it, having no say in the production whatsoever. This flopped and became a rarity among collector's items, and it is really just that, a collectible item. I mean, really, who uses this just for fun? I sure don't. Anyway, the angry video game nerd made a review focusing on a certain dent in gaming history, that is to say, a dent that went entirely unnoticed, and mentioned something of interest to me. Try doing the Contra code with this fucking thing. Alright. Okay, let's pin down the goal for us to see. That goal being the feet of the pawn, shuffling out of the way so the code of the queen can waltz in its famous sense that execute a fool's mate for victory. A simple and short manoeuvre. Yes, a certain degree of luck and cunning is required to pull it off. Simply put, I must enter the Konami code with the power glover. No doubt this is easier said than done. On the sensors, there is this little doohickey that tells me what button I've pressed. This will help me immensely in knowing if I'm heading in the right direction. Here, clenching my index finger will make B be pressed, and clenching my thumb will make A be pressed. There is no movement for start or select, so I have to press start manually. No point dilly-dallying, it's time to move on to the challenge! Fingers are twitching. There you go! Seems rather anticlimactic to have the actual challenge 10 seconds long. This was actually really annoying to pull off though, with 27 tries before I could accomplish it. In fact, why was the power club so difficult to control? Because it sucked, that's why! No two ways about it, the only reason this thing flopped in its own year was because it was poorly executed in terms of controls. The concept was brilliant and the design is awesome, but it made games nearly impossible to play. The way the power glove works is like this. The glove itself has two transmitters on top of the glove, one for the pivot of the glove and one for the rotation of the glove, that sends pulses of ultrasonic sounds to the three receivers around the TV, which are the sensors. Each receiver represents a point in 3D, X, Y, Z, or height, width, and depth if you prefer, which when the receiver receives the ultrasonic signals, tells the game where the glove is in real life. So when the glove moves, the position of where the ultrasonic pulses are coming from changes, and the sensors detect this. Tell the NES what's up, and makes the controller move accordingly. These were made by poor microphones though, and don't receive the signals well. The materials in the fingers of the glove changes its electrical resistance the more it is stretched. When your index finger is clenched, for instance, it releases enough electricity to allow the system to recognise that A is being pressed. These are sent via the leads actually plugged into the system, meaning they are somewhat easier to execute. From personal experience, it's much better if you have your fingertips dug into this material in the index finger, as when it's clenched, it stretches more and makes the glove press B pretty much every time. The A button, however, is more stubborn, as you really have to go out of your way to clench your thumb to make it pressed. You can use your middle finger to press down on your already clenched thumb to make it go that extra length and make it also press A almost every time, whilst leaving your index finger to press B rather subtly. If better technology was used, this might have actually been a hit. It was bad, but it was ahead of its time. It was loud, ambitious, and wanted to be heard. Mattel just didn't have the technology to create what they had in mind. And if it wasn't for the Power Glove, then probably the Nintendo Wii wouldn't be here today. Well, at least in a form that is well known today. The Power Glove made its place in gaming history, just not in the way it desired or intended. I'm not entirely sure I would ever be in such a position to do this again. I mean, if for some reason, some weird logical reason, I went over to a friend's house and wanted to play Contra, but he only had, like, power gloves for controllers, then yeah, I guess this has served me well in my life. But seriously, when will that happen?